Let's talk about Morph UVs, and this is a game changer. This is a uh, very, very cool. I'm going to go in here to Matcap Gray. I'm going to hold down Shift and turn off all our poly paint here. Now, you can sculpt on UVs now, so you can actually morph your geometry out to a flat state and sculpt on it, and you can also poly paint. Uh, poly paint's probably a little bit easier to demo and also show like, hey, this is, this is much easier. So let's say I wanted to paint something on here. So for example, I can go in here uh, to my texture. I want to put a little ZBrush logo on here. I can try going into like my standard brush, changing to the drag rect with my RGB on there and trying to paint that on there. Uh, maybe turn my focal shift down and it'll kind of work, but you're gonna see it's gonna get nasty and kind of stretched in there. So what we can do is you're gonna see if I go into my polyframe here, we go down here to geometry and uh, subdivision level of one. I have subdivision history. And if you want more information on like, well, if I bring in something from Marvelous Designer, how do I get something low res I can UV to flatten it out and stuff? I have this all on my YouTube channel. You can just do a, well, here's Marvelous Designer, a Cozy Brush Quick Start, also my art, art station page. I have that on there and uh, any number of my live streams. I've also dem demoed that. Uh, but essentially what we have is this is cloth from Marvelous Designer and we've given it thickness and we've projected our details back. And instead of trying to paint it in this state, let's go ahead and flatten this object out temporarily. Now, if I did just have a low res and I needed to UV it, Again, this is kind of a refresher. Let's go ahead and turn texture off. If you go in here to Z plugin and you do UV master, you can say work on clone. We want to go ahead and have polygroups turned on. It's not symmetrical. Polygroups are going to determine where our islands or what our islands are. We can say uh, flatten. If it has UVs, you'll already see them. Uh, if it doesn't have UVs, you can just hit unwrap and then you can flatten and then you can hit W and control tap any of these and you can go through and you can move, scale, rotate, do whatever you want to. Uh, it's just geometry at this point uh, on a flat plane, I should say. So you can go through here and you can say like mask by border edge, grow, control tap to invert, or go through here and shift smooth. This geometry is a lot. You can do whatever you want to to your UVs. If you're happy with this, go back up here to unflatten UV master, copy UVs and paste it onto your original mesh. Now I'm not going to do that because I already have UVs set up, uh, but that's essentially how you get the UVs set up on your object. Now once your object has UVs, I'm going to go into solo mode, and your solo button might be down here, uh, or if you want to, you can hold down shift and turn the eyeballs off for everything, so you're just looking at the flag here. And we're also going to go up to subdivision level 4, because we want to paint on a high resolution surface. When we're poly painting, it's vertex information we're painting on, so we want as many vert vertices to paint on as possible. So I'm going to go down here, and under UV map, you can see we have delete UV, which means we have UVs. So let's go ahead and say morph UV and our object's going to morph into our UV map. And you're going to want to take notice of, in fact, it might be easier, we want to paint on the purple side. So when I morph my UV, you're going to see my UV kind of flips around, and this is the side we want to actually paint on. In fact, before we do that, I can quickly kind of just do, if you don't want to watch poly paints move around, you can quickly go in here, and we'll go to standard brush, dot stroke, RGB intensity, uh, choose like a dark gray. I'm going to be like, I want the ZBrush to kind of go in that area. So now we want to morph our UV, You'll be like, oh, okay, that's that's where that needs to go. And of course, uh, if we undo that, with our standard brush selected, and under our brush settings here, go to auto masking, turn on back face masking, and that way when you're painting or sculpting, nothing is going to go through to the other side. So there we go. We're going to morph our UVs, and that's where we want the ZBrush logo. If we want to, we can just paint on the back side. We just got to flip it over, and now this is the way our Z is going to go. So now this is much easier for me to go through here, go to drag rect, go to our texture, Grab our texture and just go ahead and drag this right on our flag here. Now when we're done, we're going to hit Morph UV. It's going to morph back to our object here. And there's our Z perfectly on our object. We can hold down Shift, tap the eyeball, bring everything else back, select a white color, turn off texture, and there you go. Our Z is right where we want it to be, poly painted beautifully and a lot easier on our object. Now you can see I did the exact same thing on the patches that Patchy's made out of here. So this has UVs as well. So if I go into solo mode here, we go over here to Morph UV. You see I got a bunch of islands on here. And I'm going to go ahead and go just temporarily to Matcap Gray so you can see a little bit better. So if I want, I can go in here to Texture, Import. I got some fabric patterns. I can go ahead and um, shift select all of them. And then let's go ahead and just select one of these. I'm going to add this to my spotlight. This little plus minus button right here is spotlight. I can scale this down a bit so it fits on my screen a little better. I can also turn the opacity down so I can see through it a little bit better. And if I hold down shift, I can also tile it a couple times just to make it a little more tiled. I can hit Z to go into paint mode. And then if I put my patterns behind here, I just go through with my RGB brush. And if you've watched 
the history recall brush, you're probably going to be able to tell where I'm going through this. Let's go ahead and turn this to a dot stroke, RGB intensity up to 100. And you're going to see as I'm painting, it's not painting. I have back face masking still turned on. So let's go ahead and turn that off. It doesn't really matter which side I'm painting on. It's going to paint right through it. Uh, but in this case, it's, it's going to do fine. So I'm just going to go through here and start painting. If I just wanted to paint on one island, you're going to see each one of these islands. If I do Shift Z and turn off our poly paint, has a different color assigned to it. So I could go in here and say mask by poly groups up to 100. And we'll do like a color fill object with white so you can see what I'm talking about. And if I just start painting on this one, it's just going to only add it to that area and then only add it to this one because these are all different poly groups. doesn't matter where my brush goes. Or you can just paint on all of these. And now what I can do is I can go up here to texture and grab another one. I can say add that to my spotlight. Again, scale this down, hold down shift, tile it up a bit. And I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to paint this on there. Shift Z to turn that off and then we'll go in here to Morph UV and there we go. Now you might be saying, well why did you paint two textures on it? Well now I can use my, if I go to BHR, if you've watched the videos on the History Recall Brush, uh, we have RGB on 100 and then Z sub off, you know you can actually go back in your history to where you had another color and then paint it on your object. Now if I tried to use this now, like, oh, you know what? I want to uh, paint this one. So I'm gonna hold down control and tap that one and then go forward and now I wanna paint that color. Um, it's gonna do a really weird thing. It's not really following any pattern. It's certainly not matching anything. It's because what I have stored in history is flattened, which is actually okay because if I wanted to mix these things up, all I gotta do is go uh, forward, all the way forward in history. Well, let's go back to where before I did all that stuff. And I'm gonna go to Morph UV and go into solo mode. And with that marked in history and RGB turned on with my history recall brush, I can actually go through here and I can paint in history to my flattened UVs. In fact, again, go mass by poly goes up to 100. And I can just very quickly go in and paint out different versions of these. So then I go out of Morph UV. And if I'm like, you know what? Let's go back through my history Here's this version. I'm going to control tap this one and then go forward. And now that I'm in 3D mode and the version in history is also in unwrapped, unflattened mode, I should say, I can still go into my history recall brush and I can actually start recalling this poly paint back from my original. So either way, you can do it through Morph UV or in flattened mode. I'll go ahead and turn my mass by poly groups back to zero. I mean, you see how quickly and easily you can go through and texture things. And just one minor addendum here. I call this texturing with Morph UV. Technically what we're doing is poly painting, but you can texture with Morph UV in, a, in that sense that you can go over here to texture map, create new from poly paint. And since you already have UVs, you can transfer your poly paint to a texture map. Now, if you want to control the size of that, go into your UV map and then change this to like 4096 or 8192 or whatever size you want. And then go over here again, texture map, create new from poly paint. That'll transfer your poly paint to your texture. And then if you want to export that, just got to clone it off. Go over here to your texture menu. And even if you, you know, before you go and uh, say export this out, remember you can also go in here and adjust colors. So you want to click and drag and select all the reds. Maybe shift those over to, I don't know, yellows or greens or something like that. You can uh, do that. And then you go in here to texture and you have it selected already. Just export and you're good to go.